Oh, yeah. Is it recording? Yeah. All right, sit down, please, so that you're not blocking the camera. <laughs> so Gary, Gary. Wait, zero. I'm not blocking it, right? Oh, no. Zero, let's go. Come on, zero. All right, Malik. Come on, let's go. All right, now, several people have asked that they have something else to do in the second half, and that's okay as long as I'm able to get done what I need to get done. So you guys need to be quiet. Get your notebooks ready. This is new. You haven't seen this before. And so I want you to make sure if you're, you're on target with that. Okay? So we're going to define today the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. Right? Yes. All right, now, it's one over the cosine of theta, oh, no, it's a, a, uh, hypotenuse, Somebody. over I take one more day off before I go. Okay. And the cotangent, okay, <laughs> theta is equal to the COT of theta, which is one over the tangent of theta. All right, so now, what I'm giving you is some trig identities here. I'm going to talk about trig identities. And what that word means is that for any angle, it doesn't matter what the value of the angle is, the cosecant of that angle is the same as 1 over the sine of that angle, and vice versa. The sine is 1 over the cosecant. They're, they're reciprocals of each other. Okay? And so this is going to be equal to... Uh, the adjacent over the opposite. Now, to put this in perspective so that you can get these definitions down, and their abbreviations, what we use for sine, cosine, tangent, CSC for cosecant, SEC, and COT. Okay, so they're, they're called the reciprocal identities. The reciprocal identities, and then hopefully by today I'm going to give you three Pythagorean identities. All right, so we'll work on that and we'll get to that. All right, but we're here to get this in perspective. What does all of this mean? What I'm going to do is look at an A triangle. I'm going to call that A, that B, and that C. The legs are A and B, and the hypotenuse is C, right? Now, when we define the sine, the, when we define the sine, it was opposite of theta, right? It was opposite A over the hypotenuse C, correct? When we defined a cosine, it was B over C, the adjacent side, the adjacent side, B over C. That's a B, by the way. Okay? And then when we defined the tangent, we defined it as A over B, the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay, so in terms of A's and B's and C's, it's very, very simple and easy to define, well, what is the cosecant? The cosecant being the reciprocal of the sine, is simply C, C over A, right? So it's the it's the reciprocal of A over C. Opposite uh, hypotenuse over opposite. So we start with the hypotenuse. So C over A is the cosecant. Alright? So this one is going to be what? Oh. C over B. And this one is B over, B over, B over A. A. Right. So very simple, reason, right? So now how do you find, okay? The cosecant, secant, and tangent, then, uh, cotangent, on your calculator. So, wait, look at your calculator, right? Look at your calculator. So, what is it? Sine, cosine, tangent, right? So, where is where is cosecant, secant, and cotangent? That is so confusing. No. 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 That's exactly why I said that. Because that's your that's your your initial kind of idea would be oh yeah okay it's it's the reciprocal right but that it, that symbol right there in in trig is not used for reciprocal okay is it e, this is the reciprocal button oh. wait okay. one over x right so if I found if I wanted to find the cosecant of an angle, let's so far, here's what we're going to do a problem here, right? So, oh, so what, let's look at the sine of 30 degrees. Well, what do we know the sine of 30 degrees is? We know that's what? 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 One half, right? So that's one half, right? That should be. So what would the cosecant then of 30 degrees be? Two. 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 Right? So now, how do we get that answer? Well, you can do it two ways on the calculator. I'm going to show that to you, so that this is Wait, very, Brother very Pace, important. Yes. This is not the the second sin is not cosecant. No. Sine. Sine. Whatever. Sine. No. Sine inverse is the inverse sine. 
not the reciprocal. But okay. wouldn't sine so, to the negative 1 be 1 over so, sin, no. sine? No, that's just what I just said. <laughs> Why not? S-I-N negative 1 theta mm. does not mean 1 over sine theta. Oh, that's Okay, it. so write that in your notes. That does not mean that. So the, here's what I'm trying to say. Oh, no, no, you wait, don't wait. use the second sign to get that sign, to get oh, the boy, cosecant. Boy, boy. You have to first of all do the sign, okay? So we can do it one of two ways. We can say, if I want to find the cosecant of 30 degrees, sense. I do one divided by the sine of 30 degrees, okay? So what's one over the sine? It's That's the cosecant. So that answer is two, right? That's the answer I wanted to get. So I took the reciprocal of the sign, not the inverse of the sign. Okay? And now that's a different concept. And that's the whole point of today's lesson. Is that this, this symbol is going to be something we're going to do, but not yet. Okay? So that's different than reciprocal. That does not mean reciprocal. Has everybody got that? Okay? All right, so now, what happens if I want to find the cosine? All right, let's say at 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees. Everybody knows what that is, right? The square root of 2 over 2, right? Square root of 2 over 2. So what's the secant now of 45 degrees? 2 over the square root of 2, right? So this is 0 0.707, and this is now, if you simplify it, square root of 2, square root of 2, it's 2 square root of 2 over 2, so that just turns out to be the square root of 2. Now, what did we say uh, square root of 2 was? It was, oh, point. One, one point. One point. One point. One point. Okay, so that's the answer I know I should get, right? Okay, now watch. Watch this. All right, we're going to get the cosine answer, okay? So I'm going to do cosine at 45 degrees, and that gives me 0.707. Now, now what I want is the reciprocal. I don't want the inverse of that. I want the reciprocal of it. Right. So I could use oh, the reciprocal yeah, yeah. key, right? Yeah. That's inverse. Answer right. inverse. That's 1.414. You see that? You see that's the answer I want to get, right? 1.414. Okay. So now I use the reciprocal key to find the other trig functions. These are called reciprocal identities. All right? Yes. Yeah, well, I want it in square root of 2. OK, so let me, let me summarize. Reciprocal identities. I'm going to write them out for you. Okay. The sine of theta equals 1 over the cosecant of theta. That's a reciprocal identity, or the cosecant of theta equals 1 over the sine of theta. Okay? Yeah, we're going to use the sine inverse key. That's going to be called the sine inverse key. Right. Uh, unfortunately, they use that negative one symbol, uh, and I don't like it, but that's the way it is. Okay, the cosine of theta is equal to 1 over the secant of theta, or the secant of theta is equal to 1 over the cosine of theta. All right, now these are called the, the reciprocal identities, and then I'm just going to do one more thing with identities, and see where we go from that. Okay, the tangent of theta is equal to 1 over the cotangent of theta, and the cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over the tangent of theta. Are you going to give us an example of that, too? What? No, I don't think, I don't, I'm not going to do it. Well, it's the oh, you want, if you want to, sure. Okay. What's the tangent of uh, 45 degrees? Are these the things we just wrote? Yeah. That's 1, right? Okay, so what's the cotangent of 45 degrees? 1. 1, right. Okay. Oh. One over one over one is one, right? Okay, so it's the same thing as the, as the other ones, right? Okay, now listen. There's one other uh, part of this, and the tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. These are all identities, right? This is true for any angle. It doesn't matter. 
from zero all the way up to 50,000. You said that stands for a tangent? Point three. Okay. Any, okay. But any angle, angle, any angle, it doesn't matter. Okay. This, these things always work, no matter what the angle is. Right. And now, so somebody tell me, what's the cotangent of theta equal okay, to? Cotangent. One over the tangent of theta. Right, one over this, right? So what would what would happen? Oh, so we're one. So it's cosine theta over Wait, what? sine theta, right? So it's the reciprocal, right? This is the oh. reciprocal, right? Okay. What's reciprocal mean? You flip it over, right? Okay. So everybody got that? Yes. Okay. Now here we go. Now we're going to need all of that information. It's going to come to play very shortly. So when we do trig identities in detail. All right, but now I'm going to talk about the Pythagorean identities. Okay, Pythagorean identities. And we have one basic one, and for that one, we get a whole bunch of identities. Right? Okay, uh, we get a whole bunch of other ones. Okay, now uh, let's go to the unit circle for a second. Unit circle, Wait, one, ready? right? So and let's get an angle in here, any angle, theta. Okay, and I'm draw my triangle. Now, remember, the triangle always goes to the x-axis, never to the y-axis, right? Never to the y-axis, always to the x. And then, okay. Now, what did I call? I call this x, right? And I call this y because that point right there was at comma y, right? All right. Now, this one goes with that. What do I know? From the Pythagorean the theorem, the that one's the th what? The x -axis. That's the x-axis. Oh, okay. Hi, goalie. Okay. <laughs> what? What do I know for the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle? A squared plus b squared equals c. That's right. So what does this say? X squared plus y squared equals one, right? Okay. Now, in terms of, in terms of, right? Can you go to the uh, in terms of this, right? Yeah. Right. What, what, what do we say in the unit circle? Look on your unit circle. What do we say the x coordinate was? Ooh, um, was the what of the angle? Or the, the, the degrees? The, the cosine. The cosine of the angle, right? Yes, does it say that on your unit circle, right? I tell you, you got to have that unit circle with you all the time. Bring it to class every single day. We're going to use it often. The y coordinate was equal to what? The sine, the sine, the sine of theta. So what does this say? This says that the cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta always equals one. Now, that's called the fundamental Pythagorean identity. That's the fundamental one. From that one, we get a ton of other ones. Okay, it's. And the way your book writes it is this. The sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta equals 1. Now, nobody jumped out of their seat. I was expecting somebody to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How about, what, why did you put the 2 one in here, right? Because, because that's the way they do it, okay? Not that I like it, all right? It's the same thing with that negative 1. I hate that, but that's the way it goes. That's the way it is. Look, what it should say is this, the sine of theta squared. In fact, when you evaluate the sine of theta squared, you have to put it in your calculator this way. You can't do this because the calculator won't let you do that. But when you write the answer, you write the answer this way, okay? It's just the way it's done. Plus the cosine theta squared equals 1. Why do we right, need now. a theta sine? Oh, it's because not the angle. It's the angle. First. Any I'm angle. Just say like Z. Oh. It's the any, it yeah. stands for any angle. Oh. Oh. But v I don't like this. Any, yeah, a, I understand this in English. It's a cosine. variable. That's all. It's a variable. OK, now, you ready? No, no. You ready? ready? I'm going to prove that to you, that that is in That's fact true for any angle. We believe in brother. Any angle. I believe you. All right? We believe so, you, brother. No, don't believe me. No, we believe you. Let's just use 30 degrees. Okay? Now, the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half squared, right? Plus, this is for 30 degrees right here, right? 
The cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Remember, this was 1 half, right? And this was the square root of 3 over 2, right? So the square root of 3 over 2 squared is equal to 1. All right, now 1 half squared is 1 quarter. The square root of 3 over 2 squared is 3 quarters. And 1 quarter, ooh, the light bulb just went on, right? No. 1 equals 1, right? Now, Wait, one equals one. This worked. This worked for. So that works, right? So I proved that it works. Now that worked for thirty degrees. But what happens if I had put in two hundred and ten degrees? All right. Well, let's see. Don't believe it. You just erased my work for the place. Yes. Okay. So it, let, let's look at the sign of 210 degrees squared plus the cosine of 210 degrees squared and I want to show that that's equal to 1. All right, how do I get the sine? Let's go, come on. How do I get the sine of 210 degrees? Somebody. Calculator. Right, calculator, all right? Just do it. Square it. Square it? Get the answer and square it. 0.75. 0.25, all right? Now, do the cosine of 210 degrees and your calculator. And point and square it. Point seventy five. How come mine are switched? Right? One equals one. How come now, mine equals one? How come listen, what was this? One quarter plus three quarters. That's point twenty five plus point seventy five. No, mine are switched when I did Why is that? Because two hundred and ten has the same reference angle as thirty degrees. Right? Oh, okay. Okay. So there. Two hundred and ten degrees, right? Is what? Is one hundred and eighty plus thirty. Plus thirty. So it has the same reference Yeah. However, you guys gave me the wrong answer. You know you right? oh. Not, not, not really. You didn't really give me the wrong answer. This was a negative a half, right? But when you squared it, see, when you squared it, it became what? Positive a quarter, right? Okay, now, and this was negative the square root of 3 over 2, so when you squared it, it became 3 quarters. Okay, now listen, common mistake, it's the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals 1. The sine of theta plus the cosine of theta does not equal 1. Not 120 minutes. Okay. So if, if we're doing 30 degrees, a half plus the square root of 3 over 2 does not equal 1. Okay. So this is not equal 1. It's the, only the square of that that works. Okay. Sine squared plus cosine squared. Okay. Now, I'm going to do one last thing and then I'm we're going to go to 1. I'm going to Pythagorean. <laughs> this is my basic Pythagorean theorem. Right? I'm going to divide this by sine squared. Sine squared. Uh, no, I'm going to divide this by cosine squared. Yeah, like cosine, squared cosine squared theta, cosine squared theta, cosine squared theta. Now, I divided every single term by cosine squared, so I did nothing illegal, right? No sick birds. Not that we know yet. What is this? What's sine squared over cosine squared? Oh, oh it's something. What is it? It's what a four. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a no, it's tangent. Tangent. Tangent squared. Woo! Right. One four, one plus what? One, one, plus one, one, one equals cotangent. Oh, oh no, exactly. Wait, wait, wait. It's secant. 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 It's Then what I did was I divided every term by cosine squared, and I get this identity. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, plus one. Very important. We're going to use the like wait, the I have a question. Ah, very good. <laughs> Let's take sine squared plus cosine squared. You're going to get this Right. And O equals 1. Now divide by sine squared. Sine squared. Oh, his Wait, it's on the right side of the question. Okay, one plus cotangent squared. Oh, who the hell is that? I'm going to print that. Excuse me. This is why you don't have Brother Pice, I have a question for you guys. Wait, wait, wait. Why is it? 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 Why Okay, is that recording? Yeah, it's right there. You're sick, bye. You're number one. You're out. Okay.
All right, so we got to get that angle right there <laughs> in radians. Yeah. That's the key to doing this problem, right? So what we got to do is subtract 42 degrees, 7 seconds, 15, uh, 7 minutes, 15 seconds, minus 25 degrees, 46 minutes, and 37 seconds. So you have to okay, now what you have to do is you have to remember. 70, you, have to, you have to remember that 1 minute equals 60 seconds. Okay, 60 seconds, right? And one one um, one degree is equal to sixty minutes. Gary, where were you? All right, let's go. Come on, come on. All right, now. So I can't subtract thirty-seven from fifteen. So what I do is I borrow from this, make it six, and make this seventy-five. Because I borrow sixty, right? Because one one minute equals sixty seconds, right? Okay. So then subtract. That's thirty-eight there, right? Okay, now you have a uh, 6, and you can't subtract 46, so you've got to borrow 60 again, make this 41. So that's 20 minutes, right? And then 41 minus that 16, right? So the difference, that angle there is 16 degrees, 20 um, minutes, and 38 seconds, right? What does the P represent? The what? The P? P Not that's the 1 degree. 1 degree. Oh. 1 degree, yeah. Okay, now yesterday we talked about, well, how do I convert this to a decimal, okay? So we're going to convert that to a decimal by going over... 16 plus 1, or uh, yeah. over 16. Right, okay, so we can do it that way. Okay, let's do it that way. So it's 16 plus 20 over 60, right, plus 38 over 3,600, right? Okay, so this is 16 plus 0.33, right, one-third, plus... Whatever this turns out to be. What's 38? Uh, it's, you know. What's 38 divided by 3600? 0.11. 0.11. Oh. Yeah, it says 0.01055. 0.1010. 0.1010. Oh, point, if this says 0.0105, so. Okay. Up, All right, so we'll round that up to 011. Right? 0.011. So add that to this, that gives me uh, 0 0.341, right? So 16.341 degrees, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, now, what I have to do, but here's the secret. What I have to do is change that degrees to radians, and then the, uh, the radius of the Earth was 4,000, right? So now, how many radians does that equal? Uh, how do I get that? Well, what do I remember? One degree is equal to 0 0.027 Radi radians, right? So 16 degrees for 1 degrees is equal to 0 0.027 times 16.341. Mm. Okay? 341 equals what? 16.341 times 0 0.027 will give me how many radians that angle is. Okay? What's 16.341 what's times 0 0.027? 4.41207. 4.41207. Okay, radians, right? Okay, now we're going to put that number in here. 4.41. No, that's good enough. 4.41. All right? And multiply by 4,000. Uh, you multiply 16.241 times this, that. right? You need to get this, right? Okay, so now, now we're going to do 4,000 times 4.41. 17,640. 17,000? 17,600 and what? 40. 604, right? Yeah. 640. 640. Yeah. 40. Uh, you sure this is right? I don't think that. That should be 0. 0.041, right? That's that's way too big. Oh. Do, do 16.341 times 0. 0.027. 0. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that's the same. Okay, so I do a physical therapy. I know. Okay? Yeah, so it's, it is. What's your name? How come? Right? 0.44. Right? Yeah, not, not 4 4 right? yeah. 0.44. Alright, times 0.44. Now, now, what's that? That's 16. 1764. Right, about 1764 miles. Right. Okay. So, what's that say? That says that the arc length, the distance from Miami to Erie, okay, is about 1764 miles. And that's about right. If you think about where Erie is and where Miami is, you know, in the United States, over here, I got a map of the United States right here. So. 
So that's the answer, right? Yeah, that should be the answer. To or, or close to it, look. All right, so here. No. If you think, here's Miami right there. Miami's right here, okay? And Erie is right there, okay? Oh, right. Now, if you drive, if you drive from Erie to Florida, it's about 1,700 miles, roughly, okay? That's a long time. Yeah, because it's 1,500 miles if you Wait, drive it says from New Jersey. It's 1,140. What? It says it's 1,141 miles. Yeah. 1,141? Yeah, it's 52 here, right? Yeah. Well, did we use, uh, did this, was this right? Did you give me that number right? Well, isn't it uh, 180 over pi or something? Yeah, 180 over pi. That's what you do to pi. change it to radians, right? It's, it's, it's uh, no, wait a minute. It's, uh, if you want to change from degrees to radians, right? So you're going to multiply by uh, 180 degrees is one mm -hmm. radian. It's it's one degree. I'm sorry, one radian. One radian mm -hmm. equals 57.3 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to divide, uh, if you want to get one degree, you're going to divide one by 57.3, okay? And so uh, whatever that is, I think that's 0.027, right? 0.017. Yeah. 0.017. Yeah. 0.017. Yeah. 0.017. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, that's why we're off a little bit then. Right? Okay, so that should have been 0 0.02 then. What's 16.341 times 0 0.02? 0 0.34. Yeah, it was for you. Times 0.017. 0.27. 0.27. Okay. okay, well, let's, 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 we're rounding off, so we're off a little bit. Look, so this should have been 0 0.28, not 0.44. Now do that. Yeah. Now we're going to get something around 1,200 miles. 1,100 in. I got one, 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 one. One, one, one. One. All right. So that's pretty close to the answer, right? And the only reason why we're a little bit off is because we're around. That, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. So does everybody see that? That's about 1,100 miles from here to here. Now I've told, I've talked to people that have driven from New Jersey to Florida, and they said it's roughly a little bit under a thousand miles. Maybe it's like 900. 900. Well, not, my house is 999. Right, okay, yeah, it's a little bit under a thousand miles. So from here to here, you know, 1100, that makes sense. Okay. I will do this walking. Hmm? I will do this walking. You walk? I went to Brazil right. just walk. You, yeah. you walk 1100 miles? Yeah, no, I went to my house in Brazil, from here to my house in Brazil walking. Yeah? Yeah, I'm serious. Okay. All right. What, you ran out of gas? You, you'll be my age by the time you get there, but that's all right. No, like sometimes <laughs> I will get some rides. And okay, so these guys, now you got an idea of how to go back to that problem? Yep. So all right, now, what about the next one, 55, right? It says, assuming the width of the Earth is 4,000, the, uh, the, the diameter, what is the difference in latitude of two cities, one of which is 325 miles due north? Okay, now in this case, in this case, you already know that the arc length is 325, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that the radius is 4,000, oh, right? This so now, what are you doing? You're solving for what? Theta. For theta, and that's the difference in the latitude, right? But that's in radians now. It's in radians. If they ask for the answer in degrees, you have to change from radians to degrees, right? So it would be 325 divided by 4,000 okay. equals so many radians. It's 0 0.08. 0 0.08. Okay, now remember, 1 degree was 0 0.02 radians, right? So 0 0.08 would be about 4 degrees. Okay, so it's about 4, four degrees is 0 0.08, right? So, and that's, that would be the difference in latitude would be 4 degrees. Okay. So those, those, and that makes sense because those cities are really not that far apart. So right? that's the answer, final answer. Yes, that would be for 55, 4 degrees. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, what else? Anything else on that homework assignment? So I expect that homework assignment to be handed in today, 3.33. That should be done. Uh, I only see, but I mean, maybe one or two in there. Zero, you're the man. Okay. All right. Now, uh, does anybody have any other questions? All right. Take, we've got about 10 minutes. Finish that up and hand it, put it in the bin before you leave. What is that? Uh, Monday, if we're in school Monday, then we're going to start in on looking at some tree graphs. We're going to start looking at And I also want to work on that worksheet number two. 
All right, we haven't done that yet. So, um, so we've got a lot to do yet. So you don't the beginning the and, so. and that's it. I'm going to call for the police. <laughs> I will put you in big 